Man, what is happening, my YouTube family? Of course, it is your boy, Be New. I'm coming at you on this Monday. And first and foremost, as always, just want to send out positive vibrations and blessings to anybody who could be listening. Now, with all that being said, uh, we do know the NBA finals are in full effect. I want to talk about that just a little bit, uh, but I will get to that in just a moment because what I really want to focus on right now is breaking news. This just in, Rasheed Wallace has been hired uh, as a member of the coach of uh, the coaching staff of uh, Coach Darvin Ham uh, of the Los Angeles Lakers. Now we do know uh, Rasheed Wallace uh, currently uh, is a member of the coaching staff of Anthony Penny Hardaway for the Memphis Tigers uh, in the college game. Uh, and Penny had kind of said, I think on yesterday or the past couple of days, that it was a possibility that Rasheed Wallace would be leaving to go uh, work under Darvin Ham with the Los Angeles Lakers. I don't know what many of you may think about that. Uh, first of all, Darvin Ham, of course, is a first-time head coach. And second of all, Darvin Ham, uh, you know, a lot of people thought he would go out and get veteran uh, assistant coaches who have already been head coaches just because he has not been a head coach. But so far, that doesn't seem to be the case as they have added uh, Rasheed Wallace. Now, I will say this, uh, Darvin Ham, I think, is a great hire because, you know, you can go out and get a Scott Styles, or you can go out and get these same coaches that's been on the coaching carousel for years, and what have they done? Have they won any championships? I mean, even if you talk about a Doc Rivers, what has he won since 2008? You understand what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, uh, it's the young coaches. If you look around the league, look in Boston, you know, look at all these teams. The younger coaches are the ones who's getting it done uh, because a lot of these older coaches, they grew up in the old system and the old philosophy, and we know the NBA has evolved as in all things normally do, and now the NBA has so much more more floor spacing, so much more ground to cover as far as what defenses have to do to be able to defend. I will say Darvin Ham always was a defensive minded coach. And one thing I like about Darvin Ham, I don't know if you guys know this, but of course Darvin Ham did go against the late great Kobe Bean Bryant in the slam dunk contest. Uh, of course, he didn't come up victorious, but if you can get a chance, go back and check out the YouTube of Ham against Kobe in the dunk contest. And not only that, Ham did serve as an assistant coach for the Lakers for a small period of time during uh, Kobe's time with the Lakers. And they used to go at it one-on-one -on -one, uh, at each other at the practice every day. And Kobe said he loved working out against Ham because of the physicalities of Ham. And I think that is going to be great. Uh, you know, he's a great young player. I don't think he's going to be a yes man. And then he got somebody like a Rasheed Wallace to his staff. To me, Rasheed Wallace, I don't know, especially you young, younger people not familiar with Rasheed Wallace. Rasheed Wallace was an absolute dog off in the paint. And I don't know if many people who were fans of the Lakers remember in his latter years when Rasheed Wallace was with the Boston Celtics, the one-on-one uh, -on -one matchups and the fight in between Pau Gasol and Rasheed Wallace down in the paint was just a whole thing to watch within itself. It was almost like watching a separate series. It was very, very physical. So now you're adding another bad boy piston to the staff of the Los Angeles Lakers. I don't know how Lakers nations feel about having a former Boston Celtic and a Detroit piston uh, on their uh, coaching staff, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. There's no bad blood for Rasheed Wallace, and I, for one, am happy and excited that he will be joining the staff. And in other news and notes, I did want to mention that LeBron James has been uh, officially named by Forbes as a billionaire. Uh, I don't know if people realize how much money that is. You can time like ten million dollars a day and you still wouldn't get to a billion i think if you went within a whole year because that is a lot of money so just imagine being another player in the locker room and then you know you got money you understand what i'm saying but then it's lebron james sitting over there and you know he got billions of dollars so anyway congratulations to lebron uh you know and and his team and his staff everything that he does to uh, create wealth for others as far as his school uh, all the things he does uh, for his community and things of that nature is what makes LeBron James uh, really one of the greatest of all time. Not just what he does off the court, but what he does on the court as well. Now, if you really want to put something into context on what November the 4th of 2004, LeBron James scored 43 points with 63% shooting against Darvin Ham. Now, 18 years later, you look up and Darvin Ham is LeBron James head coach. That shows you the greatness and the one longevity of a one LeBron James. Now, everybody thinks 
that, you know, this is still a young man's league, and we know that LeBron James is long in the tooth, and the Lakers did miss the playoffs. But one thing I want to point out for everybody, if you did not know this, LeBron James had one of his best years and actually could have won the scoring title, but chose elected not to do it at the end because it would have been for not because of all the injuries and the things like that that prevented them from making the play-in tournament. Now, with all of that being said, LeBron James had another brilliant season. Uh, he tied his highest field goal percentage since 03 uh, from zero to three uh, feet inside uh, the rim. So he was really at that age still getting to the basket. Uh, I mean, this was the highest he shot percentage for these uh, that close a shot since the 13-14 season where actually LeBron James shot 70.6% uh, you know, and you got to think about 79.6%. And you got to think Shaq's highest was 79.2%. So that's crazy. That's basically almost 80% at the rim. We wish Russell Westbrook could have done the same because how many, how many, how many, how many times did Russell Westbrook miss at point blank range right at the rim? Uh, and another great stat that I want to point out about LeBron James, and I'm saying this is because the Lakers still have a great opportunity to contend for a championship. A lot of people are putting them away just because of this past season, even though we know there must be some moves made in the offseason. And we also so see what the approach be if the event that the Lakers did keep a one Russell Westbrook, which we don't know, that is all still up in the air. I am looking forward to this summer and seeing all the things that the like all the moves the Lakers will be attempting to make. But back to what I was saying, LeBron James shot 62% on all his two-point shots this season. And that was the highest uh, two-point percentage all time in history for anybody that averaged over 30 points a game in NBA history. And just to put it in context, nobody scored above 58% on two while scoring 30 points per game. So that is crazy. And then you got to think about it. Of course, we are enjoying these finals. And of course, the Warriors, a great dynasty of them of themselves. I mean, you got to think the, the Warriors have been to what, six out of the past eight finals. And we know LeBron James was in nine of the past 11. So, you know, that's crazy. LeBron James is a dynasty within himself because if you go to one team and you go to a championship four years in a row, then you leave and you go to Cleveland and you go for four years in a row, minus a Kevin Love. I mean, minus a Kyrie Irvin who left. And we know Kyrie Irvin has been saying some kind things about LeBron James and vice versa in the media. So who knows what could be brewing. Of course, there are also rumors Kevin Durant is one out of Brooklyn too. So that wasn't a very good experiment. We don't know how that's holding up, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, uh, I just feel like that this Warriors team, uh, you know, they can, you know, win a championship this year that would put Steph, I believe, at four rings, time LeBron James, and everybody wants to say he's going to eclipse LeBron James. And if he does, I just want to put something in context for you all real quick, because if you really think about this, uh, LeBron James actually, uh, LeBron James actually was able to go to all of these finals. And then a lot of these playoff series was leading his team in both sides of the statistics in every statistical category, which is amazing. And, you know, just to be able to have that many final appearances, uh, that is a lot and can take a toll on your body. Then you got to think about people like, uh, you know, teams like Golden State, you know, that was a great team. And Steph, uh, what did Steph do when Kevin Durant went out and Clay Thompson went out? you know, they didn't even make the playoffs. And then, you know, when he did get some of those players back and it was just Steph, of course, they didn't make the playoffs. Steph was hurt as well. I want to throw that in there as well. But, of course, you know, once Steph came back, they didn't make the play-in. They lost to the Memphis Grizzlies at the play-in without uh, the dynamic duo, Clay Thompson, by his side. You understand what I'm saying? So I just want to say something, you know, Kevin Durant, uh, if you really think about it, this is a question I really want to pose to everybody. Kevin Durant lost to LeBron James, I think, in what, 2013? Let's go in a row. He lost to LeBron James 4-1 to in the finals, lost to Miami. Then he lost to Memphis the following year 4-1. to Then the next year he lost to the Spurs 4-2, and and then he missed the playoffs the year after that, which he was injured majority of the year. And then in 2016, we all know after that, he joined the Warriors. Now, Curry, on the other hand, has won nine of the last 10 finals games with Kevin Durant, but he's lost nine of the past 11 without him. That's making him nine and one with and nine and 12 without. So that just shows you, you know, without Kevin Durant, how great was Steph Curry at these finals? You know what I mean? So at the last night, I think that Steph Curry did an excellent job 
uh, really rallying his team. He did hit some big shots. You know, a lot of times in the close game, Steph Curry tends not to make the shots as well as he does when they're up big. I do feel like Boston, in a sense, kind of uh, the first game, Jason Tatum didn't even show up and they won the game. So you would think the next game with Tatum showing up that they would actually take over the game. Everybody knows if you go back and watch my pick, I picked Boston in six. A lot of people thought I was crazy, but Boston, I feel, did what they needed to do by going to the Celtic. I mean, going to Golden State's home floor and stealing the game because that's all you need to do is steal that game. And now you got the next two back in Boston. You know it's going to be a raucous crowd in Boston, and they are really going to be going loud. And we're going to see how the Warriors can perform uh, on the road in the finals against the Boston Celtics, which I think is going to be a crazy crazy scene and i'm looking very much forward to that uh so put down in the comments below what do you guys think do you think that steph curry needed kevin durant more or do you think kevin durant needed steph curry more i kind of think that both of them needed each other uh just because we know the first year golden state won the championship against uh lebron in cleveland you know there were some injuries and you had people that did not play None other than Kyrie, who was injured in the first game that went to overtime that actually uh, Golden State pulled out before going down 2-1 to one and ultimately winning that series. And then you also have Kevin Love, who didn't even play in that series, who had to dislocate his shoulder. So uh, then, you know, the next year they were up, but Cleveland came back and won, and we all know what happened after that. So anyway, uh, put down in the comments what you think below. Uh, I'm glad to be back right now. Uh, like I said, it's been a lot going on, but I just hope everybody's still sticking with me. And if you haven't already hit that like and that subscribe button, we got a lot to talk about through the rest of these finals and throughout the summer. It's going to be a big off season. Let me know what you think about the Rasheed Wallace hiring. Let me know what you think about the Darvin Ham hiring. And uh, as always, man, just want to say right on to the real and much love to these haters. I'm out.